I'm out here at Don Edwards San Francisco Bay National Wildlife Refuge. Glimpse around. <clears throat> it's kind of hidden back there, the main building. Over here they have a butterfly garden when that's in season. But it's not. I'll walk down a couple of the trails. Let you guys see some of the stuff out here. Kind of warm out here today, but <clears throat> not really too bad. You can see a great egret out there hunting for his dinner. all kinds of stuff out here as far as wildlife goes mostly birds but see another great egret over there a whole bunch of pelicans off in the distance white pelicans let's keep walking it's what I call the bee tree right there springtime that thing is just absolutely covered up with honeybees some great photo opportunities a view of that egret if I can see him it's hard to see on my camera in the bright light out here there he is Let's walk over here to the dock. It's one of my favorite spots in the world. Got to get down through here without killing myself. Believe it or not, this is quite a task for me. Here, can't see it from here. This is part of <clears throat> part of the sloughs. Back over here, it's high tide at the moment. I really prefer being out here at low tide because you see more wildlife. I can't control the tides, so. Another little part of the slough that comes in here. Often right over here on these grass banks where all these reeds are. At low tide, you can hear a bird called a Sora, S-O-R-A. They're like a little chicken, but they're a shore bird. And they're very elusive. They're hard to get a hold of. I have seen a few of them. I'm walking down through here. They've done a lot of renovation out here in the last, I guess, about four years. I'm trying to reinvigorate the area make it more habitable for various forms of wildlife such as the 737 and, uh, they've actually kind of run the wildlife off of all the work they've been doing so slowly but surely hopefully maybe it'll start coming back this is one of the salt ponds. You can see they actually used to use this. 
It's all kind of little old docks, destroyed docks and stuff like that out here. And they've put in those, what you would call them, artificial reefs or islands. And we get just probably thousands of pelicans that uh, come out here and roost on those things at night. It's pretty cool. It's kind of empty right now, but... Anyway, you can see a nice overcast, cloudy day. It's really nice out here. It's a little warm, but... And those are the foothills off in the distance, you see. Those eventually become the Sierra Nevadas. This is that same salt pond with all the pelicans out there. And that goes, that trail goes all the way up to SFO. You can follow it for about, I don't know, 30, 30 miles as the crow flies. Probably about 60 miles worth of trail. You're not going to get that out of me today. But over... I'm having a hard time seeing on my camera, but over in that area, down somewhere over there, is Shoreline, Shoreline Amphitheater. And then back over in this direction, somewhere, I don't know, somewhere over in here, up near the, closer to those hills, is, um, Ah, uh, old Air Force Base, and I forgot the name of it. Anyway, it's over there. And right down here is a floating dock. You can see it's almost horizontal, this little walkway. Dips down about three feet, maybe. <laughs> and these little pilings that come up. When it's low tide... Those are about six feet above my head, I guess. And this thing's at about a 45 degree grade. The water's really messy right now. Well, right here. But this slough, during low tide, becomes a little stream that's about eight inches wide and about eight inches deep, believe it or not. And the same thing looking down this way, that becomes really shallow little stream. And they flow out that little grass island. It's actually probably about 15 feet around, 20 feet around. Most of it's underwater. And the slough just beyond that, and then you can see kind of a space over here somewhere over in there that is the um, um, Coyote Creek which runs all the way through San Jose and eventually empties out into San Francisco Bay it meets up with the Guadalupe River and heads out to San Francisco Bay not much wildlife going on at the moment few gulls flying over but over on this uh, this first little row over here and even even down here some as well during mating season we get green herons they come out here sometimes there'll be like a hundred pair of them and they're pretty cool they're interesting birds <clears throat> and we also get great egrets the big white ones we get great blue herons snowy egrets cattle egrets um every kind of shorebird you can think of countless gulls just unbelievable number of gulls out here they're usually over there frolicking in that uh slough just beyond the little island there 
we get white pelicans, brown pelicans, all various manner of hawks come out here. Prob I've probably counted 20 different duck species out here. We get mostly mallards and uh, northern shovelers. I've seen green wing teals, blue wing teals, cinnamon teals, all kinds of stuff. But I love this spot. Anyway, I'm going to take you guys somewhere else because there's not much action here. I was hoping something cool would fly over. Gulls are boring for the most part. But anyway, just in case you were curious, no public docking. Let's go further, shall we? Trying to catch some of the pelicans in flight, but no luck, no dice. Great egret looking for its lunch. Just love those things. Another great egret. I'm just kidding. That's the same one in a different spot. Hoping to maybe catch him getting a hold of something, but. see something. little uh, trail here. This goes all the way back around and back up to the main building where we started. See if we can see something interesting along the way. Maybe. Maybe not. all interesting to me.
Wish she could be here with me. I've got a pipe packed in my pocket. I don't know if I'll get a chance to smoke it or not because it's a little windy. But we'll see. Yeah, see, there are even mice out here. Salt marsh harvest mouse. I have seen a couple of them in here before. But they're pretty shy, especially with an egret around. I don't know if an egret would eat one of those or not. I suppose it would if it could. Hawks will definitely grab them. We get all kinds of hawks out here. Northern Harriers, Red Tails, Sharp Shinned. I can't count the number of different kinds I've seen. I've seen Golden Eagles out here. Several different kinds of kites. Some black Phoebe. Those are some cool birds. I think I'm going to sit down on this bench right here and rest for a minute. Probably walked uh, maybe a half a mile, maybe. I'm worn out, man. Sucks being old and infirm. Yes, I know there are people that have it far worse than me. be a bad idea to be smoking this pipe without having something to drink. I get choked up out here. I'll be in a mess. Some old Joe Krantz. Figured this was a good setting for a corn cob. So anyway, these are, um, this is right at the tip of San Francisco Bay. There's a series of salt ponds, defunct salt ponds. They don't use them anymore. There's about, I want to say there's about 25 of them. And some of them are, I'm just guessing, but some of them are probably 30, 40 acres. I can't remember the total land area out here. But these salt ponds used to be where the nation got most of its salt from. Tides would come in and fill them up. And then in the summer they would, well, there are various ways they would do it. But they would block some of them off to where they nothing could get in or get out. Then as the water evaporates, it leaves all the salt. <clears throat> and they would get a pretty good chunk of what we got out of these ponds. I don't know if it was used for consumption or industrial use or what. I have no idea, but... <laughs> And then behind you, back over in that direction, is the Alviso Marina. I'm going to go over there after this. I'll talk a little bit more about it when I get over there, but 
that and this made up a large part of the economy of this area. Between the gold rush and the early 1900s. when industry and everything started moving in it just kind of faded away that's the way it goes yep, it's so nice and peaceful out here spots in the entire Bay Area. <laughs> All these planes are taking people away, so I'm not going to complain about them. Here we are, we're close to the marina. <clears throat> this is the former Bayside Canning Company. You see on that little mural door right there, it says Drawbridge. I'll tell you something about that in a minute. <clears throat> but it's almost completely caved in now. There's not much left. Uh, it's completely abandoned. There's another building back there in the background. Even the top is caved in on that one. I'll I'll take you over there and you can check that out. And this is what's left of the Bayside Canning Company. I'm almost certain the last time I was out here, the rest of this wall heading in that direction was still standing. So they've either taken it down or it's fallen down. I'm almost certain because, yeah, I can see it leaning over over there. I had some photographs of it because it had some cool features on it as far as something dilapidated and rustic looking. Rebar all bent out of shape. And the wood, the uh, brick was supported with like wooden trusses, like roof trusses. Except for that one little corner right there, this thing has remained relatively um, graffiti free somehow or another. See around the other side over here. That's part of the canning company I showed you from the front. As you can see the roof's about to cave in on that. And of course, the airplanes. And this over here. the tail end of the Guadalupe River. I'm going to walk down to the dock for the boat ramp. Set up shop down there for a few minutes. So here I am sitting down on the Guadalupe. There's a little boat launch, a couple of boat launches here. That goes out 
maybe a mile and it meets up with uh, the other river I mentioned Lost, um, Coyote Creek and after it meets up with Coyote Creek it winds its way out to the southern tip of San Francisco Bay out through the salt marshes and stuff like that right over there that little inlet I don't know if you can see it very well but that's a little I guess you call it an estuary or something that runs through those marshes and that comes out back over um, where Alviso I'm in Alviso but where the other side of the city meets the bay or meets the water it kind of winds around turn the camera around here in a minute talk to you for a second it's kind of windy so I hope you're not getting a whole lot of wind noise but if you are hey don't blame me so here I sit <clears throat> probably 20 minutes after that last little clip Captain Quint came in on his little um, kayak while I was sitting here. Had to wait for him to get situated. <clears throat> Apparently, there's nothing. Didn't deserve to be cussed out. His boat, his radio, other people at the dock. <clears throat> Not me, apparently. Anyway, I don't know how well you guys, how well that's showing up on there. Hopefully you can see the sky and the water and all that stuff. It's really nice out here. I'm a firm believer you can find the beauty in anything. And you don't have to look far out here, man. stays like this for the rest of the day, man. It's going to be a magnificent sunset tonight. I can't sit out here till sunset, but <clears throat> tempted to have tempted to come back and see. It's nice to get out of the house. Tell you what, a pipe along with this setting would relax anybody. If you have the opportunity to get out somewhere like this or anywhere really where it's nice and peaceful, take it. so sure about this though. I suppose if I look hard enough I can come up with something. Don't hold me to it. A couple of turkey vultures flying over. Stray cat sitting over there in the reeds. I don't know where he came from or how he got out there.
guys enjoyed tagging along with me today. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being, but I'm guessing about 20 minutes. So if you've stuck around this long, good on you, mate. I shall see you on the porch. I forgot to mention drawbridge. So if you, um, I'm just coming out of the marina. This railroad track runs out to Don Edwards, that first place I was sitting, <clears throat> and out through the, through all the salt marshes and up towards Oakland, up towards San Francisco and that area. And about three miles up that track, there's a little, a little island basically that it crosses. And uh, back in the, pull right over here in the shade so I can talk to you. Because it's not safe to drive while you're on your phone, apparently. It's, at least that's what I've heard. <clears throat> Turn the camera around. Somewhere I can turn the camera around. So anyway... <clears throat> Out that track, about three miles, there's this little island. And um, back in the late 1800s, when the train tracks made it down here, everything was shipped by through all these um, canals and stuff like that, and all these waterways, all the canning that they did here. And this was a big canning place, Alviso was. It was as big as San Francisco. Or bigger at the time and, uh, all the canning that was done was here and then it was shipped up to the port of San Francisco to be sent out around the world and uh, there was a train track like I said that goes up through there well there's one spot when that train track came through it's so low to the ground that the boats weren't able to go under it so they built a drawbridge and it's three miles out in the middle of nowhere so they built this little community on that island and named it Drawbridge. And at first there were just a few people that lived there and they lived there solely to operate that bridge. It was a hand, hand crank drawbridge. And over the years it built up into where there were, I wanna say several hundred houses out there. I can't remember the exact number. It may have been like 800 people that lived out there. And after the canning industry kind of started dying away here and train tracks kind of took over everything so there wasn't as much shipping going on, at least in this area, that community became defunct. Well, all those people still lived out there. And the only way to get from there anywhere else was to walk down the train track and our boat. <clears throat> Slowly and surely over the next 20 or 30 years, everybody left and it became a ghost town. Well, and it remained that way for a long time, decades. Well, in the early 80s, the San, San Jose Mercury News ran a story about it. Speaking of the train, they still use the tracks. But anyway, the um, the Mercury News ran a story about this ghost town. This might get loud. He's cruising. <laughs> it's only used for passenger trains now. <clears throat> So they ran a story about this town and rumor spread that it it was a ghost town from the, the gold rush era and there was gold and all kinds of treasure out there. So everybody went out there and just basically destroyed the place looking for gold, looking for lost treasure and all this stuff. There was nothing out there. And all those buildings got torn down, graffiti, whatnot. 
Now there's probably only about six of them that are still left standing. They're still, I mean, you can see the walls and foundations of a lot of them, but still maybe six or seven of them that are left standing. And uh, it's a great place to go take photographs of old ghost town like places. But the only way to get there is to walk down that train track. And those trains run about 70 miles an hour down that track. <laughs> You take your life at, at risk if you do it. It's illegal to go out there, but as far as I know, they've I've never heard of anybody being punished for going out there, but who knows? I'm not going to risk it. But yeah, there's some cool pictures that people have taken from out there. If I can find some, I might tack them onto the end of this video. We'll see. Anyway, I'm going to let y'all go for real this time. I'll talk to you later.